set match and point for the time being for what we were able to do with this scrimmage match now there's a number of pros and cons that I do want to try to point out and so I'm going to sit here and systematically try to point out as many of them now that hindered the general normal progression of events that needed to happen in order to have this qualify as an actual official clan battle of sorts and so this had to comply for a different thing that I kind of had to alter and work around considering the rulings that I had placed in toe for gamefacts.com and how this would comply to what we're doing here with a, with a not completely registered clan so allow me to elucidate and mind you this elaboration is going to be from an unbiased perspective because I know my perspective and the perspective of the main figurehead of brawlers seems to be idealistically different but we arrive at the same end result once the main person's way is achieved and you get what you want or you just have to have it explained to you a number of different times I don't care I'm just going to try to explain this right now because I want to try and be as straightforwardly honest and didactic about this skirmish face off whatever it is because I'm not going to try to sugarcoat it. Everybody else who was a brawler respectfully understands how I felt about this and how AOC felt about this and I understand their input in wanting something big as well but we had to try to work with what we were given and that's fine. Now, the outline for this clan battle was originally a four versus four, but IRL conveniently or selectively had happened right at the last second. And so this had to be altered for a four versus four official clan battle into a three versus three unofficial clan battle, which I'm labeling a skirmish or scrimmage, however it is that that's labeled correctly or stated correctly. I'm labeling it just for this specific occasion, that way it can seek to try to have some type of completion or an anchor, an anchor point for the real clan battle that's supposed to be ahead. Why it wasn't today, I don't know. Now, I know the whole premise of the ruling outline was to get away from doing three versus threes or trying to officialize three versus threes because that's not how these clan battles are supposed to be done. And it's not, it's not supposed to be done like that. The original agreement, as it was stated for 4 versus 4, had to be comprised into a 3 versus 3. And there have been specific situations once upon a time where I have had to make do with the there being a one-man short for each side if it already originally started out as a 4 versus 4. Since this did start out, or make the effort originally to start out as a 4 versus 4, and then someone went AFK at a really, un really bad time, then we just had to do this as a 3 versus 3 and then let that go. And try to move forward, that way we could go through all this work in order to try and have some type of confrontation for a battle. A good battle between friends happen in some way, shape, or form. That way you don't have a whole clan pissed off that the other clan was ready and had the opportunity to be ready this entire time but didn't take it because one person doesn't want to fight AOC at all but it's the only clan battle that you have that is respectively presentable for your clan in order to fight and gain experience from regardless of actual stature or the people that's involved in the match and at any rate, once we moved past those unnecessary elements of inconvenience and illogical rationale, we went on ahead and did this skirmish, if you will. And since the respective other clan leader was not here at this time, the other people that also represented the clan at that time, which was Terracon and the Mad Killer Dude, had respectively stepped in and wanted me to have this be officialized in some way to try and go through with this match today. And so I did comply 
and um, that's why I gave a general outline for why I did settle upon trying to respectfully officialize the three versus three since it did start out as a four versus four but then complications happen with half the half of broad <coughs> half of brawlers clan being inactive or not responsive during a time when they needed to be responsive and it's settling on just three people at that time being D uh, Super Psy, Newman, Terracon, and Mad Killer Dude. And then Super Psy didn't even show up until, I guess, later on. I don't know if things happened IRL. If, so if things did happen, that's okay. But you got to put in a word in order to try and have a heads up. So that way it's not a whole group of people left hanging when you said you would be there when you're not. And so it became a three versus three with mainly Newman and Terracon and Mad Killer Dude. And then Newman had to go eat right then and there. And so it ended up being a two versus three or a two on four, two. However it was, it was something that I, for my, their end, they wanted to do a three versus three. And so for AOC side, this is where I had to comprise the backup backups plan that I did put in place just in case this particular emergency outcome did come to pass and hey look what happened and so I had to revise the entire combative layout that I had for AOC and try to comprise it into intervals of three and in order to invoke the buddy system outline that I have for the Alliance of Chaos which is very identical to what it is I had for tagged once upon a time in placing the official combative buddy system tactic where we would just mainly have to travel as a click and in traveling as a click it would allow more vocal combat plays to happen it's easier said than it's easier said than done it's i can't state it that well right now cuz my head is just hurting right now from all this crap Anyway, I invoked the buddy system for this until we comply with the three versus three. I had already promised Death Guns and Campers and uh, Captain Duck probably that we would see some action. Or we get a chance to see some action in this clan battle, but it comprised my, it forced my hand to where I had to comprise even the comprised portion and rationale for the clan for the for the script for the scrimmage and in doing that for the scrimmage what I did was I uh, went on ahead and had that one of my dudes on our team that was not going to play today I had him sub in for them for their team that way it could be a little bit more evenly balanced and so Noah Benbug did this in order to allow there to be a balance for 3v3 and so from there we went into the scrimmage as is Three versus three, capture the flag, five captures, you know the jam. Handle the business as it was. It was a five to zero straight flush against the team in the scrimmage match. And that's that. There was a slight complication somewhere during the scrimmage where you can also see it on screen. Where I did respectfully had to stop or do what it is I was doing because of uh, one of the people on their team, I believe Mad Killer Dude, was not responsive with things that were going on in real life at that time. And so I did respectfully back off in order to allow it to be a two versus two kind of thing there going on in the clan battle. That way it would be a lot more balanced rather than there being a three versus two because they're one man down when the man's right there. That's It wouldn't be fair to brawlers to do that. And so that's why I respectfully took myself out while still recording. That way I can record to the best of my capabilities the match as it's going on. And I, this will allow Death Guns and Campers both to come up with a game plan and go over their own game plans that seems to be astronomically successful for the most part. Because this entire layout for the for the flag running was Campers' idea. Which I definitely give him some good credit on here. Because he's the man with the plan when it comes to putting together a good tactical layout. And this was the first time I'd seen a Titan runner. I was very astonished to see Death Guns do the whole flag run as a Titan. 
because I've never seen any other flag runner in the history of this game do that, because it's an excessively big gamble that ironically did pay off a couple of times. And so that's pretty much the scrimmage as it was. Like I said, this was supposed to be during the midst of that during the midst of that scrimmage. There was uh, Marines that did come into the chat because he did want to try to respectfully substitute for brawlers. Also, that way this can be oh, this can be upgraded to a four versus four, and this can actually resume as an official clan battle. And then the whole thing can be labeled as a clan battle tier confrontation in full. Which I was very happy for if we could do this, but that is not what AOC. That's not what brawlers had wanted to do. This is what AOC did wish. That way we could have more people come in. That way they wouldn't feel left out of the clan battle. After I already promised them that they would see to having some action in the clan battle, but this would also give brawlers a more prosperous chance in representing their clan and in trying to ascertain a win in their own right because for this battle the winner or the loser was not on the mind for AOC it was in trying to help a good clan try and get on its feet and try and get some momentum in its way going its way that way it can pick up some steam and it can be a pretty good clan in its own right and it can still do that to this day but after this clan battle had happened, they all decided that they want to try and postpone the continuation or the start of the clan battle itself. They want to postpone the continuation of the clan battle, the scrimmage, whatever this is going to be labeled as that I label that I'm labeling it for another time and this and try to sort out what's going on with their members, what's going on with the barracks and all that stuff that just suddenly just came collapsing right during this clan battle, right at the start of this clan battle. And it's not fair to brawlers for them to have something like this happen out of nowhere. And the events almost leading to a dramatic conclusion for this match, which did not need to happen. And it does not need to happen. Because it is understandable with all the events that came in tow. I understand the representing leaders of brawlers, Terracon and Mad Killer do, do understand. And so we are here. And so what I'm proposing next is, yes, we will try to continue this battle or this match another time. Once your forces are reassembled and orchestrated, coordinated, organized, what have you. And yeah, we will try to see if we can do the whole batch in full and pick it up from the top where we last left off right here. The Alliance of Chaos has your back. You have the complete support of the Alliance of Chaos in hoping that you guys get back on your feet and seek to become active still. And so we can have a very beautiful, illustrious clan battle as it was foretold to be. That'll conclude my synopsis for the time being of the initial and very first skirmish of Fall of Cybertron. Between the Alliance of Chaos and Brawlers, you guys have a good one. And as always, until all are one.